welcome back to my design series. So today we're going to be talking all about textures. If you've ever wanted to add a vintage vibe to something you were working on or you wanted to give it a crinkled paper look or a fuzzy effect, that's what we're doing today. So if you are new here, this series is all about the beginner. So it's for the crafter, it's for the teacher, it's for the small business owner, it's for the Etsy shop owner. So if you are wanting to design things for yourself and you want to start from beginning and learn how to do it well, that's what we're doing. So we are working with the tool Kittle. And in the first video, I showed you how to open up your account and use their templates, which are a fantastic way to get started if you're a beginner. And then in the second video, we talked all about wavy text and I even showed you how to morph text into a shape. And now today we're talking all about textures. So let's go ahead and pop into it. Okay, so here we are on my computer on Kittle.com and I have already set up the design that we're using in today's project but um, just scrolling through some of the Christmas ones that they just recently populated the site with. If you want to learn more about these templates, make sure that you pop back over to the first video in the series. And I have gone ahead and pulled us into the project that we're working on today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to apply texture to any graphic. So this could be a graphic that you uploaded or designed. It could be a template that you're using from Kittle, but we're going to apply texture to the graphic. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Where are all the tools on the screen that you need? If you look over in the left-hand navigation, you'll see this up here says templates, and this little icon is highlighted. So these are templates that you can use, and then you can move down to text, and these are text options that you can use. And then you have a section for elements. Now I will tell you that their element section is still elementary. There are a lot of better elements and I'm using elements from Creative Fabrica. And then this is the brand kit. The next is your upload section. So you can see that I uploaded graphics that we're using today. And then this is trending images. The next one down, second from the bottom is textures. And then the last one is Kittle AI, which by the way, I've used and is great. So we could talk about maybe doing that in a, a separate tutorial. So this is the texture section. So if I skip off of that for a second, you have a lot of options here. You have grunge, paper, alpha mask, uh, pattern textures, crack textures, plastics, grain, halftone, marble, photocopy, fabric, natural shadows, which is really great if you're working with photography, wood textures, brick, and abstract. So there's a multitude of masks that you can use. Okay, so now let's select a texture and see how that works. One key to note is you have to click on the actual artboard. So click on the artboard that you want. When I design, a lot of times I'll have multiple artboards and you don't necessarily want to apply that texture to everything. So I'm going to select the artboard and then I go back over to my textures and you could do like, for instance, this is paper. If you wanted to do like a crinkled paper effect, see how that then applies. Um, and then you have pattern textures. I really think like this one is, is kind of neat, putting a pattern behind it. Um, and then you could go down to something like plastics, which I don't think I would ever use, but oh wow, that gives you that really hardcore grunge. Yeah, that's not something I'm probably ever going to use. Um, but then you have things like, you can see here like the wood, texture and so again that's very like in your face kind of thing you could go with this that one's a little bit softer maybe that could work for something um, and then brick this is kind of fun it's, there we go so that could be kind of fun depending on what you're doing now none of that really works for the project that I'm working on today but you know that could be kind of fun okay so now that we've looked at all the different textures let's pick something that might work for this particular project and so I'm thinking that would probably be in the pattern texture area run with something that's very tight so you can kind of see it. Okay, so now you can see that the texture has been applied to the graphic and you're like, Kim, what, what just happened here? So there's a couple of things that we're gonna do over in the right hand navigation. So don't let this scare you. There's lots of tweaks that you can make to this. So if you look over into the right hand navigation, you're going to see a texture section and you're going to see the actual texture, the opacity. You're going to see a mask, a different mask with a drop down, but this is the alpha mask which I do tend to use a lot. Um, you'll see the release texture, delete, and clip content. And so what I would tell you is the first thing that you want to do once you have you know, attached this, 
I would go ahead and clip the content because what that's going to do is allow you to see your background. So the texture won't be on the background anymore. It will only be on the design. So if you clip the content, so you see now your white background is no longer with the design. It is literally just white and we could turn that. This is your background color right here. We could you know, change that to a soft pink so that you can maybe see that a little bit better. And so, oops, I <laughs> click back on. That's actually a good thing for this tutorial, right? So if you click off of it, you see how it, it disappeared, it hid because it wasn't available when you're not on an actual artboard. So if you click back onto it, now you can see it again. And so you have your alpha mask and you can choose different types of mask. Um, and so it depends on what kind of look that you're going for. Again, I'm using the alpha mask, but then you have this opacity. And I'll be honest with you guys, this is such a strong tool in this because right now you can almost say that your red is, you know, not as bright or vibrant as it was before. So if you take that opacity down, what you're going to see is it's literally just taking down only the texture, so only that pattern. And whenever you're printing something, this is really important to remember, if you're using like a grunge effect or something like that, it will, and a lot of times those effects are literally just removing color. And so instead of having a pattern, you're actually removing the color. And then when it prints, it looks like it's weathered. And that's great, except if you go really high on the opacity, you're getting, you know, significantly less ink and it can almost look too weathered. And so then if someone purchases that, they wash it one time and they feel like, you know, it looks too old already. So I would just say, be careful with opacity, maybe even test print one, or if you're working with a printer, have them print one for you and maybe even swatches on the same shirt with different opacities so that you can see what that printed out piece is gonna look like. So I would adjust my opacity and I would say that for this, because it is a pattern, I would probably go at least 50 or 60 because I would want to be able to see it, right? So now that we have that, but say I change my mind and I'm like, you know what? I really don't want to keep that, but I can't seem to delete it. And I'm not going to do it because if I delete my texture down here in my layers, so you can see this is our artboard texture is the top one. If I delete that, it's going to delete the entire artboard because if I move off of that, do you see how they're both green? They're both green, which is meaning that it's, it's both of them at one time. So if I delete that texture from there, it's gonna delete my entire artboard. What you really should do is up here in your texture section, if you release that texture, now you can see it on top by itself again, and then you're able to like literally go down into your layers, and just delete it. And so now you're back to your design and you can test other textures. The nice thing is, is once a texture is there, you could click onto different textures and, and see it and not have to actually delete it. It would just swap out the textures for you. Okay, so that is how you do textures. And I would love for you guys to pop down in the comments, leave me questions if there's anything I can help with. I am going to put a link to this bow down in the description. It is off Creative Fabrica and it is actually a template so you can change out uh, the colors and the patterns and things. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to pop down into the description and get links to everything we worked with today and pop down into the comments and tell me what you want to learn next and I will see you next time.